Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Acacia Courtney. And uh, this is truly a Chamber of Commerce day. Uh, the humidity is down. We're in the low 70s. Just a beautiful day. Look at that blue sky. Fast main track, firm turf course. And how about this? A little later on, we'll talk about it. A million dollars in the uh, Rainbow Six jackpot guarantee. But uh, just a beautiful afternoon here, Acacia. Yeah, it really is. We're very lucky for that. Uh, appreciating the nice days every day here in South Florida and looking forward to today's races coming up on tap. Well, I want you to enjoy this afternoon because tomorrow you're on the hot seat with the uh, Beat the you Expert. You had to remind me, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, Beat the Expert coming up tomorrow. Uh, it is always free to play. Head on over to the Gulfstream Park website to get your picks in for Friday. We have 10 races on the card. Our first post is 1.10 p.m. You have until first post to enter and have a chance to win one of those Beat the Expert polos. Ron's been kicking everybody's butt each week. <laughs> So maybe with me, you have a better chance to win Beat the Expert. Well, that's not fair to you because you had a really good day last week, but somebody had eight winners. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't impressive. happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this doesn't happen very often. And with that, also on Friday, each and every Friday, we have the Stronic Five. So let's show you the rundown of the Stronic Five. We got two races this week. Mm -hmm. We got Leg B and Leg E. That's race seven and race nine, both of those uh, turf races here at Gulfstream Park. And we got Laurel, Santa Anita, and Golden Gate. So we got the whole team ready to go on Friday. Yeah, if you're playing Beat the Expert, then you've already got two out of the five <laughs> legs of the sequence covered as we have two from Gulfstream Park, so you might as well throw in a dollar. A uh, low 12% takeout there for the Stronic Five starts at 3.55 p.m. on Friday. Yeah, and Pete gave this a uh, great name with Overlay City. Right. If you see the payouts every week, you'll know why. So <laughs> uh, that takes care of all the early stuff that we have to do, and we've got the Pick Five. We've got two Pick Fives today, and we're approaching $100,000 in the early Pick Five pool, and let's check a check of your ticket. Well, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off early, and that was because it was either use one horse or use a lot. <laughs> and the early favorite is the six, Mia Solomia, who I believe is largely the favorite because I read Ortiz is in the saddle. But she just is a five-year-old mare who's 0 for 9 and never seems to win. So I'm going to put all my eggs in one basket of the eight competent um, who drops second time out but mainly gets a chance to get on the turf, and I think that's going to be key for her. She's just the one that I like best in that spot. I'm too deep with Ultimate Gift and Load Up Mo in race number two. Um, I've got three horses in the third race. That's a pretty nice one. Looking forward to seeing that race in race number three. Uh, the fourth I wanted to spread. I, I felt that there were potentially some horses that could take a big step forward here in this maiden claiming race. And then I'm three deep in race number five, though I do think Camellia Gal should sit a great trip. Yeah, and that is the first leg of the Rainbow Six that we mentioned that has the $1 million jackpot guarantee. Uh, and and, you know, look at the board right now, Acacia, and you can see just for all the reasons you just mentioned, with the number six, Mia Sola Mia, uh, this one is going back to the turf. She dueled for the lead. She finished third. Race was moved uh, uh, to this level and distance on the dirt. She's a lightly raced mare, has I read in the saddle, returns. So uh, if you look at her performances, it's certainly a best surface. But like you said, she hasn't won. And I think that's the reason for the tepid 7-2 seven, seven favoritism. And it's true. I mean, I, I know she has I read her but I read wrote her last time. Yes, the race was off the turf, but she still finished kind of the same kind of race that she always runs. And before that, she had Louis Sayas running her and her riding her in her last couple of starts, finishing second and third. That just seems to be the typical of what she does. And I do find it funny that a horse that I liked a lot and singled, you didn't use at all. So um, I don't know what that says, but uh, the eight competent, the race was taken off the turf in her debut for 35,000, what I thought was still a pretty solid field. Um, she has a sibling who is a five-time turf winner. She's by competitive edge. I had noted first time out that I'd like to see her on the grass. She's been working sharply over the Palmetto's turf course. So I'm going to take a shot with her second out for John Kimmel and Jose Ortiz. Well, I like the thinking in there because, like you said, this is a wide-open race. Mm -hmm. And maybe you just go with the breeding angle. And John Kimmel does an excellent job. I, I did use the three, Kayla's tune in second, who's stepping up to the 16th level in the first story race since finishing second. That was against those 12-5 types going five across town at Gulfstream Park West, Joe Orsino, Paco Lopez in the saddle.
saddle today. Maybe this horse grabs a share up there right now at 5-1. to one. And I thought the 11, R West Indy to the outside could potentially be an interesting one as she has some natural speed, hasn't been able to sustain it, maybe turning back in distance. Well, let's go to race number two today. One mile maiden claim, three-year-olds, $12,500. Did have a couple of scratches in here of the five and the number seven horse. Big Frank was one of the horses I used on my ticket, and I moved the number three ultimate gift up, who's free lo free falling, free loading, free falling to the 12 five <laughs> level after showing speed and fading to finish third. It was against fifty thousand dollar maidens. Is the fourth sale sign up here? Oh yeah, and you know what? This is it's a tough horse to trust in here but the fact of the matter is that Todd Pletcher wins with these types he just does and so I think that you absolutely have to use him even though finishing third for made in 50 you might be a little bit inclined to be suspicious of the drop but he just really does and I guess you know there's plenty of other horses willing to take his spot in line uh, in the <laughs> Pletcher barn so I think you have to use him but I gave a slight nod to the nine uh, load up Mo who finished a distant fourth last time out behind and Romp, who did just that for Shug McGay, he blinkers back on today. And it's a significant drop in class. But this is a horse that um, has kind of been at that uh, mid-level claiming level for a while. Well, the number four Couch Dreams is uh, another one getting some class relief today and adding blinkers after failing to show much against better on the turf. So I looked up a stat with Ken McPeak. A horse is just got uh, all maidens going turf to dirt. He's 25 for 131, 19 percent, 44 percent, 231 is the return investment. That's all maidens. So it's a, a big sampling and mm -hmm. we'll see, uh, you know, how that translates to maybe a good performance in here. Ultimate gift is going to be the odds on choice in here. You could look at the doubles right now, big price. But you're right, maybe you go a different way, and I can understand using Load Up Mo for Anthony Quattoloto. So uh, we'll see how that race plays out. That horse costs $350,000. You can have him for 12 dollars this <laughs> afternoon if you like. Third race this afternoon, about seven and a half on the turf. If you're just joining us, the turf is firm. These are claimers, four and up, non-winners of three in life. 20 down to 16, scratch eight, nine, and number 11 in here. And I think we both had some interest in one of those horses that was scratch convict pike. We're going to have to wait for another day. Did you have that one on top or? I had him second. I did think that he was a major player in this spot um, after a good effort last time out. But Cairo campaign, uh, first off the claim last time for Mike Maker did run fine as he faced Dream Friend who was taking a significant drop in class after running in graded stakes company um, up north and is a real speed type. So we he was chasing that one last time out, talking about Cairo campaign. So second off the claim for the Maker Barn, keeps I read Ortiz, tactical. He just kind of ticks all the boxes in this spot. Number six, big man Bob is turning back to this distance after coming up big when he shipped in from Hawthorne last time out. He set the pace. He finished fourth against similar going up mile in the 16th. Uh, Kelsey Danners, the trainer, Paco Lopez in the saddle. I thought that horse might run well. You know, the number two horse in here, King Odakar, comes off, uses his speed to win last time out. I just wasn't sold on this horse, but I can understand being the morning line favorite and be highly rated on your ticket. No, I agree. I think that he has a lot to prove as he came off of a pretty good sizable layoff um, was taking a drop in class did have some back class to go back on and he got the win last time I guess the biggest question is the quality of that race that he did face and how it stacks up in here as that was the non-winners of two condition now up to the next level as he looks for the third victory he makes a lot of sense for sure um, second off that layoff and trying to make it two in a row but again we'll have to see uh, kind of what he's able to do in this spot yeah, if you like Cairo campaign, maybe use a horse like President on your ticket. Who's cutting back to seven, finish fourth behind a Cairo campaign, going a mile in the 16th for Kelly Breen. MSC Al Jaramillo handling the turn back in distance. This horse maybe you think about using on your try and super. A race number four this afternoon, six and one half furlongs. These are maiden claiming Phillies, three year olds. 35000 down to $30,000. Had the uh, one horse scratch on the inside. So uh, that one will not perform today. And you have the number four horse on top of your ticket this afternoon, Platinum Frolic. I took a shot with this one who just based on dirt form is taking a significant drop in class. Only raced against Maiden Special Weight Company on the main track. And we'll go back to sprinting on the dirt, which I think is the right spot for her. But we do have a couple of fillies rematching as we'll take a look at the last race from Jamstar and Nuska. This was back on February 5th uh, for these two. Um, Jamstar does end up finishing second, but I thought that Nuska, who's the two 
actually probably ran the better race as she was kind of closing from off of it. Miss V time did end up going off at six to five and Jamstar kind of chasing there the number seven, not able to pass her. But I thought that both of them with the solid effort, um, one of the shorter priced horses as she frosted to the inside fading. We saw Nuska the two closing outside for Fausto Gutierrez. Yeah, both of those horses on my ticket, but I did start it off. Actually, I look now, now it's the morning line favorite. And that is five Vegas weekend is a dropping, turning back after following the second place finish against those 50 maidens at the distance. Comes up, goes back, sets the pace. Weekends was third against $50,000 types going a mile last time. Kelly Breen, uh, second time blinkers for the turn back in distance today. Thought maybe that horse can run well in that spot. Your horse had a little further down, Platinum Frolic. That's how we see race number four. We'll take a short break. When we come back, it will be Rainbow Six time, and I'll show you my ticket. Welcome back to Gulfstream today, Ron and Acacia. Fifth race, they'll kick off the Rainbow Six. It's a mile in the 16 turf starter allowance for Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds and up, who have started for 50000 or less. I scratched the number seven. Pretty nice field here. I did go three deep in the opening leg for my $43.20 ticket. I used Camilla Girl. My lips are sealed in Wicked Mercury from Jane Sibeli. In race number six, I think Ali Z and Shacklet might be the logical two in there. Race number seven, the three deep again. I got a little bit of a long shot in there, but they scratched the favorite. Uh, that's the three high tailing. I'll show you a couple of stats on Shug McGahee in that race. Soul Dolly might be a lot of people's singles this afternoon in race eight. And, and, and I like the number two horse in the last race going for gold for Anthony Quartaloro uh, with Jose Ortiz in the saddle. I know I didn't pick Tommy Bush as my long shot today. Glamour, the nine. I didn't use him on the ticket, so he's got a good chance to win today. Well, he, <laughs> that's my long shot today, there actually, you go. <laughs> now that you pointed out. So, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> well, I got him third, so I, I, I'm going to be betting him, that's for sure. But I didn't use him on my ticket because I liked the performance of the two last time out. Interesting to see how you started this fifth race this afternoon. I used the number two, Camelia Gal, who um, has been showing speed in her last couple. But certainly, uh, um, after making these picks, she was flattered by Valletta coming back to win in a very game photo finish yesterday, going a mile and a half in uh, that salty allowance race. So absolutely flattered Camelia Gal. I thought originally it looked like there was a quite a bit of speed in here and that she has one kind of sitting just off of it as well. But with the scratch of real doozy, there's not going to be, I think, as much. But she can be on the lead or just off of it as needed. I also thought the nine candy flower was interesting first off the claim for Safi Joseph. Uh, the number four, my lips are sealed, is making her first start. She went up, she set the pace and uh, finished second, going a mile here against Simla. That was back in December. But if you look at her pace figure, she certainly looks like a, a major part of the speed. And we lost a little bit of the speed. Uh, you went with the nine, maybe to sit a trip. I, I just thought Wicked Mercury, who does her best running from that stalking position, can really sit a nice trip in there for Jane Sibeli. And you got Jose Ortiz in the saddle. Uh, we basically got the same super up there to kick off the, uh, the first uh, leg of the Rainbow Six. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. But Camilla Gal looks like the one to beat. Race six this afternoon, a one-mile clamor, Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds and upward, non-winners of three in life, or race since September 4th, 35 down to 25. It starts our 
late pick five this afternoon. <laughs> yes, it does. And I've got a different kind of tactic for putting <laughs> the ticket together th today. I'm four deep in the first two legs, wanting some coverage. Um, I'm with you. I actually had liked high tailing a little bit as well. Um, Look Me Over, I think, could be interesting coming back for Mike Matz. And that's all in race number seven, which is a really nice race. Um, just two horses with Game Boy, Benny, and Soldali. Soldali, I don't really trust. So we'll talk about that race in a little bit, but um, I'm just going to single vividly in race number nine. Uh, we'll look at her last race where she just completely missed the break and then was actually closing really, really well. I think second time in the U.S. We're going to see a big performance from her, though um, kind of a bold single as that is a nice race, but I do have the long shot. Um, I, can't, I, I guess I, I didn't even think about it, but it is Tom Bush, which is typically the Iran Nicoletti long shot pick, but Clammer, who I'd always liked back here in the spring, um, um, is back on the racetrack here at Gulfstream in the nightcap. Well, uh, $32, so you got that the reverse the pyramid going on with <laughs> the, your selections in here. And, yeah, this race is, is, is sort of wide open in here. I just thought Ali Z, the five, uh, who's changing barns, going to the Sappy jo Joseph Jr. barn after claim, faces these condition claimers today after finishing fourth. But that was a solid group of 35 optional claimers last time out, going this mile distance. Uh, they keep the status quo. They got Edgar Zayas in the saddle today. I, I just thought Ali Z might be the one in this spot. Yeah, absolutely. Could be blinkers going on as well. Uh, has been freshened up since being claimed at the end of December. I think all positive things. The number two, Perspire. I think the... Uh this one is another one coming out of that same race, in fact, that could hopefully kind of turn things around. You do get Irad Ortiz in the saddle. And then the wild card, as we both agree, is Jacquelette. What do you get off of the layoff and taking that big drop in class? Yeah, she faced so much tougher in 2020 mm -hmm. uh, campaign in Kentucky for Dale Romans. Uh, Corey Lannery uh, topped his daughter Jacquelette, who was two for three when its previous stay at Gulfstream. So Jacquelette uh, liked the local surroundings. Remember that horse running? Uh, we're basically in agreement with that. But a good way to go because of course, uh, there's no standout in that race. Yeah. You said, boy, this one is uh, someone I'm going to single. Race number seven, mile on the turf, maiden special weight, fillies and mares, four-year-olds, and upward. And I did go with number three horse in here in the high tailing, uh, a lightly raced daughter of Orb, who's making a five-year-old debut for Shug uh, with a solid morning workout tab showing in preparation for the return. I mentioned I wanted to show you a couple of stats on Shug McGay with a layoff of 180 days, maiden special weight on the turf. He's four for 18, 22%. 67% in the money and still a nice return of investment of $2.76. And, and Acacia, you and I have been singing the praises of this jockey trainer combo <laughs> of Jose Ortiz and Suge McGay. I want to show you that stat really quick. And there you see it up to 8 for 30 at the meet, 27% uh, positive return of investment. And most of those races, of course, right here at the winter meeting. So uh, just a couple of things I wanted to point out. But yeah. with the scratch in a favorite in here, I think that getting the 10th to 1 is not going to happen. You might get a little bit of a price because she's off of a significant layoff, but I think that the betting public has gotten wise to the fact that you can't leave off Shug <laughs> McGahee on a layoff, and we've been talking about how he and Jose have been doing together during the meet, and that stat just really kind of puts uh, proof and numbers to what we've been noticing throughout the meet here, but I think that she's definitely interesting. Not to mention, she's been working pretty strongly up at Payson Park. Those are some pretty quick works from what you typically see up north there. The number nine look me over, though. She was where I kind of not begrudgingly, but a little bit begrudgingly did land. She just had some stronger numbers, and I thought overall it faced some really nice horses. I know she, she is over for 8, um, but she's been freshened up a little bit, training very sharply up at Palmetto's. She comes back now here in this spot for trainer Mike Matz, and just the horses that she's been running against, I think, are, are very, very impressive. And Corey Lannery has been riding his turf course good, all, very well all winter mm -hmm. long. So uh, we both have the two Katama Moonlight in second, who's turning back to the mile. Went up, set the pace, was third last time out, beating the length against Maiden Special Weight Runners. That was going a mile and an eighth. It's Safi, it's Arad Ortiz Jr., hoping to finally notch the elusive Maiden victory. This one doesn't seem to like to win. No, and that's the <laughs> problem. She just kind of runs the same race each time. She's been consistent, but... Two back-to-back second-place finishes, third by a length last time going the nine furlongs. She, you know what you're going to get from her, and she has speed. It's just can she sustain it? You know, it's some interest in the four in here. I didn't know what to really do, what to do, and I put it into a third. Regal Passage making a local debut for Cherie DeVoe. After a 
I thought Rom running pretty well against maiden special weight competition at Churchill uh, before going to the sidelines in November. It's the daughter of violence, Edgar Zayas. I just thought it was an intriguing possibility with the horse that ran okay on the turf at Churchill. And Sherry DeVoe, not a lot of starters, but her horses have been running very well. Yeah, they have been. I think something to keep an eye on as well. I threw on the number eight, Born Mean, a first-time starter, who is half to a grade three place. He's no lemon, who was very good on the turf as well. Well, race eight, five and a half furlongs, allowance optional claim of state bred four and up, or the optional claiming price of 12.5. And you're not sold on Sold Dolly in this <laughs> no. spot. You have her on the ticket, of course, but not on top. Absolutely. And uh, we'll go back to her last race. And I think that this kind of illustrates why she might be a little bit tough to trust because with a Rad Ortiz aboard, she's going to be a very short price in here. Um, he, excuse me. Setting the pace as we pick it up just in the stretch on his left lead. He never switches to his outside lead. And he's able to hold on. But I thought that Game Boy Benny, who was 12 to 1 that day, ran a very good race. And I think may potentially turn the tables on him today. Ray's Warrior is not what he used to be. But he has shown a little bit of early speed. Vincent William has shown some speed. Uh, rough Entry has shown a little bit of speed thinking that we're not going to see Sol Dolly alone on the front end, and he might just, he's going to be over bet in this spot. That's a fact. But can he win? Absolutely. I just think you can maybe find a little bit of better value. And change your barns today, going to the Tammy Levy barn after the claim, turning back to five and a half. Not that race we just saw. That was its second consecutive victory against this level. Going three quarters. Uh, I read in the saddle this afternoon. But Game Boy Benny, you're absolutely right. He's cutting back to this distance, hoping to turn the tables on Sol Dolly. Had his a number in, who's had his number in back-to-back -back races at six, maybe at five and a half, this one mm -hmm. can reverse that outcome, as you said, with Edgar trying to uh, in the saddle this afternoon. Yeah, I thought that he could be, like I said, just the kind of value play in here, and then you do have the number two unpublished. She's off of the layoff. I think the race goes through the five and seven, but maybe this horse unpublished on the, off the bench with Paco up could grab a share. Yeah, for trainer Gary Jackson. Race <clears throat> number nine this afternoon, about seven and a half on the turf allowance, optional Claimer Phillies Mares for it up, or the optional claiming price of 25000 Scratch the 2 and 10. Of course, Pete will be on soon to give you all the scratches and updates. And here's your single of the day mm -hmm. was, uh, I believe, the number six yeah. vividly. Yeah, I did just end up putting, like I said, all my eggs in one basket with this one here. We'll go back to show her first U.S. start, which was on the Pegasus World Cup undercard. She's the number eight this day, um, and she just completely misses the break. Hesitates, very slow. But that's not unusual usual for a horse coming in from Europe, particularly the Phillies I've found. So I don't take that as a negative. She's at the back, last of the pack early on here. She ends up closing to be beaten just a length. Um, and what was a salty field there was wired by Toffin on the front end in the first race on Pegasus World Cup Day. Not even in the picture at this point. And then she'll just come flying late. I thought it was a very in encouraging performance to potentially move forward off of now second time here in the U.S. is you don't even see her come onto the screen <laughs> until the very end. Yeah, I, I have her on top for all the reasons you just shown and mentioned there. I read Ortiz at top, this daughter of charm spirit. So uh, I'm waiting for that horse to run a good single by you. The number four I used in second, Sanity, who's stretching out around two turns after rallying to finish second. That was in back-to-back -back sprints going five-eighths of a mile for Kelly Breen, Embassy El Jaramillo, top the seven-year-old daughter of City Zip, who has a previous win at the distance, I believe, this one is going to be on the engine this afternoon. Use this one on my ticket. Yeah, and it's funny because she's been sprinting for so long. That win at the distance was a while ago <laughs> going two turns. So I'm curious what we're going to get from her. I kind of backed off, and I thought that this was um, vividly was a standout to me. And then the rest of the field I thought was pretty wide open. I took uh, the number eight or the number nine, excuse me, drop a hint, who um, ran a heck of a race in the off the turf Swanee River behind Gray Island. I really thought that she was going to hold on and uh, potentially uh, upset and win the race. I know she's going back to turf today, but in her last several starts, she's been running against Stakes Company. Do you happen to, did you watch or happen to see the uh, eight North Broadway mm -hmm. now in the Lisa Lewis barn open that 10 length lead in the yep. grade two Boston Spa <laughs> well, la, la, in July? <laughs> I did because that was the first race back for Sister Charlie and there was hardly any pace in the race <laughs> and uh, there was North Broadway to set the pace for Sister Charlie who <laughs> still got beat by Starship Jubilee. Um, but obviously the company that she was facing is significantly tougher than what she's going to find today. Julian Leperu in the saddle today, maybe they don't think 
thinking of steal something, but <laughs> I think the four might, uh, you know, put a stop to that. We're stretching out around two turns. Mm -hmm. uh, the last race today, five furlongs on the turf. Claim is four and up. Non winners of two. 20 down to $16,000. Uh, take it over from my buddy Clamor, you know, for Tom Bush, Edgar Zayas. Uh, this is one is worth a flyer at a price. I agree. And you know what? To be honest, I don't think that she should. he should be 20 to one or, or might even be that that big a price. I think it'll be a little bit of a price in here because he is off a layoff and the last race was bad. But the sprint races prior to that, a couple of them were actually okay. He did win and break his maiden sprinting on the turf here at Gulfstream. Obviously likes this surface. I remember liking him uh, back in the spring. As mentioned, he's been training very well at Palmetto's for the return. And I thought he could set a nice trip in here. I thought the number two going for goal was really game and defeat last time out mm -hmm. when she debuted locally. Broke from that outside post, post 10. Went up, set the pace, yielded late to finish second. I thought it was a good performance. Jose Ortiz in the saddle today. And, and you had surprise factor who's going to the Kelsey Dana barn today. And I know this one ran well going two turns last time out, but the distance seemed to have been a little bit of a stretch. I think that sprinting is definitely the stronger spot for the son of the factor. Yeah, they're going to add blinkers. And of course, Iran Ortiz Jr certainly adds to the appeal. Uh, that is how we see the Thursday 10 race card with the $1 million jackpot guarantee. But we're not done yet because we have our ever, ever world famous lightning round. World famous. I don't know if we're quite uh, world famous <laughs> just yet, but we certainly do try. <laughs> well, we have uh, an event coming up in a couple of weeks that we're all looking forward to for a great cause. Canter for the cause set for March 15th. Head on over to the Gulfstream Park website to register. You have a chance to ride on the same track as the Florida Derby and Pegasus World Cup winners. Yeah, it was a lot of fun last year. Mm -hmm. The kids, well, everybody was out there with their horses, had a great time, and there's no stronger people than people that love their horses. <laughs> That's right. So we <laughs> hope that you will join. It's all for a wonderful cause again. And uh, on that note, we have a, a, a nice aftercare story to highlight here. If you have followed Florida racing at all, odds are that you've seen Mr. Jordan on the track. I know all of us love him, but who could forget his 2014 victory in the smooth air? Under very confident handling, Mr. Jordan cuts the corner a bit green, but he shifts leads and shifts into another gear. Juan and Bina is there second. Hubba Shake is now third. Back fourth, Fear the Cowboy with honor earned. But they're at the 16th pole, and to be the man, you have to beat the man. And here in South Florida, nobody's beat Mr. Jordan yet. Ultra impressive, a wrapped up three length winner. Well, what? What? Oh, what? go ahead, Ron. No, no, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I was just going to mention you couldn't miss him with that great color. <laughs> no, you absolutely <laughs> could not. And Mr. Jordan now, uh, that was back in 2014 as a two-year-old, and now he's arriving for the next phase of his life at Old Friends in Kentucky. Yeah, 43 lifetime starts. If there was ever a horse for course play <laughs> at Gulfstream Park West, it was Mr. Jordan. Boy, did he love that track and uh, uh, got to meet the the kid that was named uh, Mr. Jordan yeah. was one of the, the Mr. McMillan's grandchildren was mm -hmm. named and uh, this horse just was so striking that gray color. It was so cool. So much fun to watch and what a great call from Pete Aiello. <laughs> Thanks to uh, everybody upstairs for finding that and getting a chance to play it today. It was fun to look back on Mr. Jordan wishing him all the best in his retirement. Yeah, we, get to, we can go see him at yeah. old, old Friends. Absolutely. As uh, Speaking about the, the track where the Pegasus World Cup is run, our Pegasus World Cup winner, Nick's Go, named Maryland bred horse of the year. Um, pretty cool to see that he's a Maryland bred being so successful on the world stage. Yeah, he was just so impressive winning the uh, uh, Pegasus World Cup uh, and just a, a great, great uh, horse for uh, Brad Cox and the connections. Absolutely. So congratulations to the Maryland Bread Horse of the Year and all of the Maryland Bread Award winners uh, taking place there in the Mid-Atlantic. As we look ahead to Saturday, last week here at Gulfstream, we had a major Kentucky Derby prep. There is a lot more around the country coming up this weekend. Um, we have the Gotham at Aqueduct, the Tampa Bay Derby, and the San Felipe at Santa Anita. Ron, will we get a chance to see Medina Spirit back, as well as Roman Centurion. They're, here's their, uh, their game effort from the Robert B. Lewis Stakes. Amazing. 
Medina Spirit, we mm -hmm. watched this race. I watched this race again this morning. We just so game wide to wide. You thought this horse was going to get past three times, of course, trained mm -hmm. by Bob Baffert. So uh, that is, of course, a stepping stone to the classics uh, coming up uh, this summer. I hope you tune in to our sister track, Santa Anita. They have a mandatory payout there on Saturday, too, right? Yeah, mandatory payout in the, I believe it's called the Rainbow Six there, too. So uh, there's going to be millions. They love those uh, uh, bet type bets in Santa Anita, in California. Absolutely. Some great races coming up this weekend, as we have also great races here at Gulfstream. Three stakes coming up on Saturday, including the Hutchison, as we'll look ahead to the sprinters. Um, Real Talk, 7-2. to two. Roderick in for Wesley Ward. And Ultimate Badger, who pretty well in the swale for Dale Romans. Yeah, pretty good. I, I went with the Willie Boy in there mm -hmm. at 8-1 to one on the morning line for Corey, with Corey Lannery in the saddle. So the Hutchison, I think it's a, a 64th running, so it's been a staple here at Gulfstream Park for many, many years. Some big, big horses. <laughs> the likes of Holy Bull, Spectacular Bid, who won the Hutchison back in the day. is On Friday, the 12% Stronic 5 is back. Don't forget, everybody, we've got all of the Stronic tracks in play. Yeah, two of those from Gulfstream Park, race 7 and race 9. That's leg B and E. Hope you tune in for that and get ready for that low 12% takeout as the man that calls it Overlay City, and rightfully so, is coming up next with Scratches and Changes. Here's Pete Aiello.